Welcome back guys to another 2 billion damage Odyssey build video, this time with the absolute ultimate unkillable god mode build that not only deals 2 billion damage with every hit and every ability you have, but is also completely unkillable by receiving absolutely zero damage. I was further tweaking the existing build and found a much much better sweet spot which allowed me to get over 100% melee resistance, max out all my other resistances and you can still deal over 2 billion damage with all your attacks with almost 100% consistency. With this build all your enemies will commit suicide before you even board the ship. In case you missed one of the previous videos you might now wonder how you actually do this. The first thing you have to do is bring your damage below minus 100%. When you do that, your damage in your inventory screen suddenly turns negative, this will max the damage overflow and the game will just think it's 2 billion damage. To get your damage negative, you have to use the minus 100% damage from the second sight engraving and combine it with the assassin conversion if you want to make your warrior damage negative or with the warrior conversion if you want to make your assassin damage negative. In this variant of the build I was able to add 100% melee resistance, up to 75% range resistance and over 95% elemental resistance. And on top of that we are now playing with 100% health with an additional 100% ignore half damage and we are still able to deal 100% 2 billion damage with every hit. This will make you so tanky that you won't even get a single scratch when you stand inside of a fire and you are still able to deal all that crazy damage. With the 2 billion damage glitch your damage will cycle between positive and negative 2 billion damage and we have to use our critical damage not to increase our damage but to find a sweet spot where all our attacks deal positive damage. And I found a much lower sweet spot at around 90% critical damage where all our attacks are positive and can deal up to 2 billion damage. And since we don't need all the critical damage instead, we can use different engravings such as resistances. The sweet spot for headshot damage is also a bit lower, however most of our headshot damage is coming from our legendary engraving anyways, but 440% is easily affordable even in the maximum tank build. Please keep in mind that these specific numbers will only work if you make exactly the same build with exactly the same stats. If you have different stats in your build you have to fine tune your critical damage and headshot damage to find your own spot where all your attacks are positive. When you copy this build exactly, your light attack will be up to 1.7 billion damage, your heavy attack will be around 100 million damage and your charged heavy attack will be around 300 million damage. However, Ring of Chaos is crazy and goes up to 1.2 billion, Sparta Kick 1.5 and Bull Rush will give you up to 1.6 billion damage. Using overpower attacks or fury except for the adrenaline will be basically pointless. The devastating shot will be between 1.7 and 2 billion damage, multi shot will also be around 2 billion damage and the predator shot due to the higher multiplier will only be at around 1 billion damage. The only downside is that your assassin damage will be so low that you cannot assassinate anyone. But if you can live with that you will get one of the greatest tank builds of all time. Please also make sure to watch the abilities and mastery section because it is extremely important not to get anything wrong here. If you use too many mastery points or if you use the wrong perks, you could end up with your abilities dealing no damage all the time. So it is extremely important to just pick what is needed to get. Even if there's a perk that is supposed to increase your damage for a certain attack, by using them you could end up dealing no damage for this attack. A single percentage point can be the difference between dealing no damage or 2 billion damage. So follow this build exactly like this shown. But now let's finally check out the build guys. Our warrior damage here in the inventory screen shows minus 500 but it will actually be 2 billion damage instead because it will be glitched. And thanks to the big hand bow we will also use this amount of warrior damage for shooting arrows. However the only thing that is not usable is our assassin damage, it is simply too low to assassinate anyone. With the 2 billion damage glitch your assassinations can only be guaranteed when you use the knife of Dalvon. You could theoretically place the knife of Dalvon in your right melee weapon slot but if you want to have 100% melee resistance you can't use your assassinations. It is also extremely important that the glitch is only working when your warrior damage is negative. If you change anything in your build and your warrior damage is no longer negative you won't deal 2 billion damage anymore. That is also the reason why we have to use hunter damage on all our items. Because you have to make sure that your warrior damage never goes above zero. For this build I used a sword with hunter damage, damage swords and fire damage. Additionally to that I engraved the permanent fire damage but you could of course also go for melee damage to nearby enemies or other sort of engravings. As long as they don't increase your damage. 
it is extremely important that you don't go for any critical damage. We want to get 100% crit chance, but we only need 90% critical damage. And that amount we will easily get from our base critical damage and from masteries. So we don't need to waste any engraving slot for critical damage. 90% critical damage is a sweet spot where all our attacks will be positive when you exactly copy this build. Don't go any higher or any lower. On the right melee weapon slot we will use the Spartan Javelin. The Spartan Javelin is the only melee weapon in the game that has melee resistance on it. It also has assassin damage and damage spares, however that will not affect this glitch. We add only 12% additional warrior damage to our existing minus 150%, so we would still be at minus 138%, which would still result in negative damage. On the Spartan Javelin you have to engrave to convert 50% assassin damage to all damage. This will add another minus 50% to your warrior damage and it is the only way to make your warrior damage go negative. The Spartan Javelin can be found on Delos Island when you follow Taleta's way and either kill or recruit the commander on Delos. If you have already played this questline of course you can get this item again in the new game plus. For the assassin damage conversion engraving you have to own the Atlantis DLC and you will unlock it in the third episode when you craft a spare in the forge of Atlantis. No matter what type of spare you craft you will always get all three conversion types. On the big horn bow we will engrave the plus 200% headshot damage but minus 100% warrior and assassin damage. This engraving can be unlocked when you collect the second side bow which is located in the pirate warehouse on Corfu Island. On the helmet you should go for hunter damage, range resistance, chance to ignore half damage and then you can engrave 20% crit chance while full health. I only had a helmet with warrior damage with these stats, well that's okay because you can afford to have one item with warrior damage instead of hunter damage. But you should not have more than that because then your damage won't be negative anymore. In our arm slot we use the stolen isobracers as in our previous build with assassin damage, 30% crit chance and an additional melee resistance engraving. If you add this item with one item being not hunter but warrior damage you will have exactly minus 102%. You can find the stolen isobracers in the third episode of the Atlantis DLC in the Fort of Menaceas. They are part of a story quest when you fight a boss in this location. On the belt we will use hunter damage, melee resistance, 10% crit chance and 40% chance to ignore half damage. Of course you can get any item with any of these stats in any order, it is just important that you engrave what is missing. If you still have the getaway garb from Corfu Island you can now use it in your torso slot because it has hunter damage, elemental resistance and bow charging speed. Here we will add the additional 40% fire resistance from the Hera class set. And last but not least on the boots we go for hunter damage, crit chance and elemental resistance and here we engraves a plus 100% headshot damage with increased adrenaline consumption. Any item that was not specifically shown with a location should be obtained with the blacksmith reload. It is only important that you get all the correct stats, the names are not relevant. The 100% headshot damage engraving can also be found on Corfu Island, you have to solve the captain and the cyclops Ostraka, the solution for that is right in the pot in Aleos village. I just want to stress again that it is extremely important to get all the same stats on every item with the exact same number of percentages to make all of your attacks deal positive damage. If you have a different build or if you are using different stats you have to find your own sweet spots by adjusting your critical damage and your headshot damage. If you copy everything exactly like shown in this video and you have one item with warrior instead of hunter damage then you have minus 102% warrior damage, you will have 440% headshot damage. 100% crit chance with 90% critical damage and 100% melee resistance. You will also have 50% range resistance and 95% elemental resistance, however from the 50% range resistance the remaining 50% damage will be halved by chance to ignore half damage, so the remaining damage you take will only be 25% in reality. The same goes for elemental resistance, the remaining 5% damage will be halved by chance to ignore half damage to only 2.5% in total, but this only affects your fire damage. Whatever you do with this build, but under no circumstances you should ever use the warrior mastery or the assassin mastery because they would add both warrior or assassin damage to your build which would completely ruin the glitch. You can safely go for 6 cents, even when you are spotted it will double your hunter damage, but it will always still be positive. Arrow master should not be used and you should always only shoot with normal arrows. Using poison or fire arrows could mess up the glitch and you will deal too much damage and your attacks won't be positive. Go for a multi shot, devastating shot, predator shot, all of them will be positive. Archery master can also be used because it is not important how much hunter damage you have. Hunter damage does not affect this glitch at all. 
use one point on overpower bow strike and get ghost arrows for your final hunter ability. In the warrior tree you can go for the charged heavy attack but absolutely avoid getting weapons master with this build you will otherwise have too much warrior damage. Gear master can be used, flaming attacks and fire mastery are optional, the amount of fire damage will not affect your damage but it will also not break the glitch. So you can use it if you want but it is also not necessary. Overpower attacks will always be positive if you use a normal attack, however if you try to use an animation cancel they might not work. Fury, Ring of Chaos will also always be positive and of course use Second Wind for your healing. Shadow Assassin should be completely avoided not to increase your warrior damage and all the other assassin abilities except for Stealth Master are pretty useless because our assassin damage is just too low. In the mastery section it is really important not to use any additional masteries than the ones shown here. The military perks are of course the 5% crit chance here in the hunter tree but don't go for any crit shot or headshot damage. Go for range resistance to increase your resistances and optionally you can also go for adrenaline on headshot kill. In the warrior tab don't go for any additional warrior damage otherwise it would ruin the glitch. Go for melee resistance, armor penetration and optionally you can go for health, armor and damage dealt restored as health. In the assassin tab absolutely don't go for assassin damage, damage swords or any damage with any weapon type. Max out crit chance at full health and go for exactly 40% on critical damage while full health and you can also use this perk to fine tune your critical damage if it is needed. Max out damage while full health, chance to ignore half damage and elemental resistance and then optionally you can also go for the adrenaline stuff and if you have enough points left you can also go for health gain per adrenaline spent. Even if you have way more ability points than that, don't go for any further damage modifier, don't go for any additional damage increase. You might actually just break the glitch and your attack would deal no damage instead of 2 billion. This build is perfectly balanced and should be used exactly as shown. I hope you really like this build and you have a lot of fun with the new damage glitch. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.